Now let's come to insurance uh, sector regulation. I'll be very brief because most of you know about what insurance is, what insurance law is, and um, why regulation. So, um, insurance regulation, uh, the ration for insurance uh, regulation is that uh, the, the purpose is to protect insurance as a financial service industry to, 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 uh, to, to create a healthy and sound financial uh, uh, sector in the country. So insurance are connected with banks for one or another reason. For example, most, uh, most, most borrowers have to buy insurance when they uh, borrow money from a bank in order to insure uh, the, the, the lender bank against risk of name payment. So, almost all bank loans are supported or backed by insurance policy. So, the failure of an insurance, therefore, can create uh, a problem risk for banks. So, there is this kind of interconnection. Most businesses have insurance schemes. A business cannot run without having, you know, security against various types of uncertainties, and losses. So, all Therefore, economic activities are, you know, supported by insurance in such a way that, you know, the, 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 there has to be an insurance scheme for people to go out and transact with each other to do business, whatever types of business. So, insurance is therefore very, very vital for the economy. So, insurance regulation therefore is aimed at you know, making these financial institutions or insurance companies strong uh, and able to you know, uh, resist different uh, economic uh, stresses, you know, bad and volatile economic situations. For example, in current COVID environment, businesses uh, are in, in trouble. So m some of these businesses may fail, may go bankrupt. If they have an insurance scheme, then the insurance have to pay. So uh, that has to compensate them. Therefore, insurance companies should be strong enough to survive such economic difficulties for that regulation is aimed to make them strong and you know uh, stress resistant insurance uh, regulation is also aimed at protecting policy holders uh, different policy holders so uh, based on this uh, insurance regulation has uh, two uh, types it's prudential and non-prudential uh, regulatory requirements like what we have seen in relation to uh, banks let's see uh, uh, the types of risks insurance companies are exposed to uh, the technical and non-technical risks for example risk of miscalculation against insufficient premiums most insurance companies in Ethiopia for example in the automobile business uh, provide uh, you know, coverage with insufficient premiums. There is even currently a move by the National Bank to set the minimum uh, rate of premium. Because of you know this poor competition, insurance companies are lowering premium from time to time. And you know uh, this class of business, known as automobile, is not you know making them or helping them make profits. It, most companies are at loss. So, this is a problem of you know, miscalculation of you know premium, miscalculation of risk, uh, risk of you know insufficient funds to cover liabilities, risk of non-payment by reinsurers. Nature of insurance business is very complex. That most insurance companies, almost all insurance companies, have reinsurance relationship because there may come a huge risk beyond their capital capability to compensate so in such cases they have to get compensation from bigger foreign insurance which are known as reinsurance companies um, risk of unexpected accumulation of loss you know, losses may accumulate COVID for example may bring huge amount of accumulated loss every business may make loss or may, 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 may suffer some kind of loss so that's also a problem uh, risks connected with investment decisions. Insurance companies are expected to make investments because they hold uh, long-term assets in their hands. So, 
risk of wrong investment decisions can also bring the insurance industry to its knees so regulation is therefore justified on all these uh, uh, factors and the type of regulation can be both prudential and non prudential we have seen you know, the justification for prudential regulation size interconnectedness lack of substitutability and the insurance industry is not beginning to in terms of size but again it's not negligible uh, in terms of interconnectedness it's very interconnected it's interconnected with banks it's also interconnected with other businesses theoretically all businesses need insurance to 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 get into a business and confidently you know you know play in the market yeah, lack of substitutability to some extent if there are no insurance companies then uh, this this important function of you know risk intermediation uh, in the society will not be served so therefore there are strong justifications for applying the prudential requirements uh, major you know, directives imposing prudential uh, requirements. Licensing is very important. It's already licensing minimum capital uh, requirement. Uh, insurance business uh, is divided into two, by the way. There's long-term business and uh, general business. Long-term business is life insurance. And general business is non-life insurance. So the minimum capital for long-term business currently is 15 million. For life insurance 1.5 million and uh, for uh, general insurance 60 million so together 75 million you can say and there are other directives uh, besides this entry requirements of uh, you know fitness and propriety and minimum capital there are other directives post entry uh, directives uh, regulations so regulatory requirements margin of solvency directive statutory reserve there has not been statutory reserve actually there is legal reserve directive investment of assets corporate governance and so on they, they are very similar with banking regulations and microfinance regulations so i'll not go into details here but uh, there is no premium no cover requirements as, as actually directives in the proclamation an insurance company cannot issue policy without premium being paid so if no premium, there is no policy. So premium has to be paid for a policy to come into force. That's uh, introduced in Proclamation 746 2003. Before that proclamation, there was a lot of problem related to payment of premium. Policy is issued on credit basis, and when the risk occurs, you know, uh, it was a very big problem. So uh, with this, let's go to cross-cutting topics in. In, in all uh, financial uh, sector regulations here we look at financial inclusion anti-money laundering interest financing countering of terrorist financing capital market development financial sector liberalization very uh, uh, briefly we'll uh, look at all these issues